Hello my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day and welcome to this free motion quilting tutorial. Today I am quilting electric pulse and this is an edge to center design and it's going to start out by stitching a triangle shape. And you're going to travel inside of that triangle shape, double the amount of space that you want to leave open. So if you're stitching on a half inch scale then you're going to stitch inside uh, one inch. Okay, I'm stitching this on, eh, let's just say a little bit bigger than an eighth of an inch scale. So I'm gonna try and eyeball about a quarter inch as I come inside with a little angular spiral. So I'm gonna spiral all the way in and then all the way out. And you can see this is the reason why we think double the amount of space because we're basically stitching straight down the middle of that space. So now I'm coming out this way and then I'm going to stitch down to where that point of the triangle is and I'm going to come out with another one. So just stitch straight on down and you can vary the height of these. You can have them be much longer, you know, small ones, skinny ones, short ones, whatever you want to do. Uh, but I really like the idea of having all of these the same length for this particular sample. So here I'm going in again, nice little spiral all the way in and then all the way back out. Now, if you're struggling to keep your straight line straight, and as you can see, mine aren't perfect by any means, uh, then you can always rotate the block and run your hand parallel to the side of the foot, and that will help you stitch that line more straight. I'm trying to show you guys that you can leave your block in one position and not have to swing it around and rotate it a whole bunch because we are free motion quilting. That's kind of the benefit of doing free motion quilting. Once you stitch electric pulse along one side of your quilting space, you're gonna break thread and begin quilting it on the other side of your quilting space. Now, another way that you can fill this, and this might actually be easier, and that is to go on ahead and break down your space into triangles first. So if you're quilting this over sashing, then you would stitch all the way down your sashing with these triangles and then you would go in after all of them are stitched and nice and even exactly how you like them and then you go in and fill them in. Another thing we have to take into account because of quilting this into a square, I'm gonna have some weird spaces on both ends and I actually didn't stitch this triangle just to make sure that I could figure out how it was supposed to look over here. So I'm going to just stitch a straight line, just a few parallel straight lines into this space and I think that's gonna look great. There we go. And then now we can get back to our pattern of stitching that spiral. So I'm gonna stitch over, spiral inside, leaving myself that nice double distance all the way in and then stitching right through the middle of that space all the way out. And that's really the key to spirals. All right, so now that we know the basic rules of this design and how it works on a whole machine, Let's switch over to my long arm so you can see how this is gonna work on a real quilt. All right, so I am on the long arm and I'm giving this a try. So first triangle shape and then careful travel stitching inside. And then now I'm gonna come in for my spiral. As you can see, my straight lines are far from straight. <laughs> That's just the nature of being able to move the machine so easily. Uh, and these angles are a little bit tricky. I have both hands on the handlebars right now, trying to give me more control. But really, I think because this is a straight line, sharp angle design, this is going to be best suited for rulers. So I'm going to grab my ditcher ruler here. And this is going to help me not only stay right on those lines, uh, right on that line I've already stitched to get down, but it's also going to help me form these angles. So I'm right here and I want to make sure, I'm actually in the border of this quilt, I want to make sure that I'm going to make this triangle a little bit bigger so that way I can come up to the corner of this triangle. It's going to be a little bit bigger in comparison to the other ones I've already stitched and that's okay. So I'm going to come out and actually <laughs> I didn't really get guesstimate that angle all that well. I think instead I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter and that will work instead. You kinda have to just flow with it. Whatever you end up with, just keep going. There we go. I am uh, clicking the machine on and off with every line so that way it doesn't sit there and keep bouncing up and down, making a mess on the quilt. All right, well, let's go inside for our echo. Come up. 
and then back down again. Now I'm going to try and do this spiral freehand. Come in, up, down, and out. Try and do that freehand. Yeah, see, I think that if the lines are relatively shorter, um, it's a little, and I can see what I'm doing, then it's a little bit easier. But yeah, not perfect. <laughs> not perfect by a long shot. All right, now let's come up. And this time I definitely want to make sure that I hit that corner dead uh, because I want that triangle. I'm in a border and I need to turn that angle. And this is the thing that's always tricky with any sort of border design like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stitch all the way up to that corner and come down. Uh, rather than you know risking having it overshoot and not work out, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that it ends up exactly the length that it needs to be. I think that makes the most sense. All right, so then now I'll flip around. And then here's the thing about ruler quilting you always have to take into account. If you line up your ruler here so that the edge of the ruler is right on the point where uh, you want the needle to go, well, understand that you're going to be ending up a quarter inch away. You're going to be ending up over here because you're adding a quarter for the foot. So you always have to have in your mind to bounce that back by a quarter of an inch. There we go. That looks good. Okay, well, I like that. And I like that it turned the corner nicely. All right, so I think, yeah, we're gonna keep it consistent. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna try and do the spiral again freehand. I think if I had, yeah, I think if I did like, you know, a hundred of these, <laughs> I think they might get pretty perfect eventually, right? Okay, one idea that I'd like to try is stitching all of the triangles first and then filling them, and that way I can maybe make them a little bit more consistent. So let's see here. I'm going to first just stitch the triangle shapes. And one idea for keeping this consistent would have been to take a ruler and measure and say maybe every inch uh, I'm going to have, or maybe every two inches, I'm going to have another triangle. And to have that marked on the quilt, so I have little tick marks. So that way I'm coming up, and I know that that's where I'm supposed to have my point, And I'm coming back down, and that's where the base is supposed to be. So, you know, if you have a nice border, and you're really wanting the design to fit perfectly, then I would say marking little tick marks along it is probably going to be a great idea because that will ensure that the border will fit. Now notice that some of my triangles are tilting ever so slightly to the side. I think that's you know another thing that could be sorted out with a little bit of marking. If you wanted the triangles to all be consistent. I kind of like this though. They're definitely unique <laughs> in their own way. All right, so I want to stop again on this point. I think I'm going to estimate my space this time. Just see if I can make it happen. Bring that one up. And then remember, you want the ruler to be positioned a quarter inch out from the point you want to hit. And there we go. All right, so now it's just a matter of travel stitching carefully and then coming inside for our little spiral. Now you can see I'm getting a little bit of bounce in the quilt here. That's kind of affecting this a little bit. So I'm gonna try my bag of beans method, quite literally. <laughs> this is a bag of 15 bean soup, which is absolutely delicious. So um, you can always get it for your long arm and then eat it for dinner later. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it's about a pound and a half bag. And that's putting a little bit of weight down directly onto the ruler base that's on my machine. And that's giving me just a little bit more control. All right, let's see if that helps. And I think that's an improvement already. I don't trust myself to travel stitch without the ruler. I'm gonna show you what that'll look like. I'll go really slow, kind of holding my breath a little bit here. Ah, that wasn't too bad. So yeah, I think it's definitely giving me a little bit more control over what those stitches are doing and where I'm going. The biggest thing is just overcorrecting. You know, if you feel like you're going uh, off the line and then you overcorrect and then you end up shoot overshooting it way too much on the other side. And I'm just not worrying that my lines are not perfectly straight. I'm just enjoying this design, and I think because the triangles are now straight, 
you're getting, you're still getting that effect. And I, I really actually like this. I think it's very interesting. Uh, if you want your quilt to be soft, you know, you see how kind of tight and dense this is. And I'm quilting into, I think this is a three and a half inch wide area. Uh, yeah, you're gonna need to widen these lines or have a bigger border to put this in. Uh, you can also just stop here and only stitch half of the design and that would be a-okay. You don't have to quilt the opposite side, but I'm gonna break thread, move to the opposite side and show you what that looks like. So I am quickly quilting the triangles on the opposite side. And I just realized this is actually excellent for ruler quilting, also excellent for stitching straight off the edge of your quilt because now you don't have to worry about really careful travel stitching back here because I'm just stitching off into the batting area. And it's perfect for ruler quilting because I can just visually estimate my space. I get about a quarter inch from those other triangles and then I know it's time to change direction. If I have to stitch a little bit down, I can. And then I can bring up the next one. So this definitely feels like the perfect design to stitch with rulers, you know, plan it out a little bit, know how big you want your triangles or do it randomly like this. I think this looks pretty good. Um, and, and then you can go in and you can fill those triangles with anything or you could leave them empty and blank. You could leave them plain and then they won't be quite so dense on your quilt. The concern that I get from a lot of quilters is you know just oh that's gonna make my quilt stiff and yes it will if, if you really quilt a lot if you put a lot of quilting into something and then you have a particularly dense batting like a polyester batting then it's going to be on the stiff side a cotton batting is a little bit more forgiving and will soften up even more over time but a poly batting and i'm using wool actually here for this so, you know, you kind of have to just estimate and think, okay, how, how do you want it to feel in the end? And you might not need this much quilting, you know? All right, so turning a corner, again, tricky thing to do with the border design, uh, an edge to center design like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm coming in with a point over here. I'm gonna come in with a little point over here. We're kind of shrinking that down just a bit in this area. I'm gonna have this stitch out this direction. I like that. And then now we're gonna put a triangle right in the center. So stitch down a bit. Okay, and then now I'll bring that, I should put the ruler on this side. There we go. Come in. Again, don't wanna to get too close. I want a nice little gap between these triangles. There, I really like that. Yeah, and that really makes sense. It's a little bit random. You know, the triangles aren't all the size, same size and shape, but I think that really works and it looks good. That's the most important thing. If it looks good to you, then it's correct. All right, now I'm gonna come in. Last few triangles here. Just going back and forth with my ditcher ruler just to have that in nice position. And guys, you could absolutely do this with the Ditcher ruler on your home machine too. This is not a long arm exclusive. You can also use rulers on your home machine too. And I'll make sure to link up a video on ruler quilting basics on a home machine as well. All right, last few triangles. Yeah, really like this effect. And I think that it's worth playing with just as plain triangles. Also worth playing with just to see, oh, okay, well, you know, how does it look like with just one echo instead of, you know, a whole spiral going down in the center? All right, now I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try a little spiral here, completely freehand. Okay, that looked good. Careful travel stitching. Key with travel stitching on a long arm is just to slow down. And it's a lot of like little muscles that you have to build. I haven't had a lot of practice with it, but I'm hoping that this year, sharing this series, I'll really be able to get that practice that I need so I can start quilting more, uh, just a little bit more perfectly on my long arm. Oh, I'm so proud of that travel stitching there. That looked good. Not so proud of my very wobbly lines, <laughs> but yeah, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I think a lot of that has to do again with just control. So I'm gonna put a little bit more weight here. I'll be able to quilt a few triangles before, actually just one triangle before I have to move that, but that's okay. Two hands on the handlebars I think also can help. 
this a little bit better. Now I'll move the bag down here, spiral in, spiral back out. Again, this is gonna end up feeling pretty dense on this quilt because those lines are so close together, but it's not a deal breaker. You know, this is an experiment quilt, and I think you should give yourself permission to do this kind of thing. Now, it looks like I have a thread break here, but I think you guys get the idea of how to quilt electric pulse into a border. I really think it's a good idea to break down your triangles first, to go on ahead and stitch those almost like a foundation so that you know how you're turning the corners. The inside corner, you can see I just bounced and really kind of just skipped that whole area. I didn't put a triangle this way because that usually ends up going very awkward. You know, I came up, hit the corner, then changed direction. That left almost a square shape here uh, on the opposite side and it's much easier to go in there and do something funky on the outer side of the border coming in. So I think this is a really good idea. Break down the border with triangles first, then go inside with your design if desired. And you know, if you don't want all of those little lines, if you don't want that much quilting in your quilt, that's a-okay. Quilt it as much as you like, maybe even just do half of the design and leave that half open. I kind of like that. I think it's a really cool design. So that's it for Electric Pulse. My name is Leah Day, and I really love teaching free motion quilting both on a home machine and a long arm. My home machine is the Eversown Sparrow 20, and you can learn more about it at leahday.com slash so 20. Now the long arm I'm quilting on is the Grace Cunique 14 plus or 15 R recently went through a name change and the Q zone hoop frame. This little frame can fit into small spaces and you can set it up as a set down and that can give you more control. You can also put a home sewing machine on this frame as well. If you'd like to learn more about it, go to leahday.com slash Qzone. Until next time, let's go quilt.